Hi everyone, today I'm going to teach you about um, using beam elements as opposed to uh, using a solid element for um, beam bending. So we're going to start with by modelling it as a solid element and then compare it to the beam elements and you'll see why, um, why we choose to use beam elements. Um, so here's a, um, a steel beam, uh, 100 by 50 with a 3mm uh, wall section. Uh, we've just built that up as an extrude and it's uh, one metre long and um, go into simulate. I'll put a uh, displacement constraint on one end. Now this is going to be um, uh, over that surface so it's not allowing any rotation. It's, that's fixed, fully fixed surface constraint there. I've applied the load at the end here over this surface and I've put it as a 2000 Newton load in the Z positive Z axis so that's been flipped by accident there and I've applied a material to it the material steel and then we can then run an analysis so here I've got this analysis of the box beam I run that and um, takes a little moment to go. So it's divided this mesh up into small solid elements and um, normally they're set as a tetra. Um, and so it's still running. There it's done. So that's probably taken about half a minute to run. And say so we will just look at some principal stress and there we go. Let's have a look for our, where is our max up here. So here we've got 235 MPa which is really high but this is um, due to the way we've constrained it so that might be slightly misleading. We just put a dynamic query in here. We've got 87 MPa there. And same thing goes here. The way we've attached that load has caused this kind of localised problem there. Okay, so now if we go back and do this as a 2D um, beam element. So let's just create a new one. Let's say this is a, this is a beam. beam as a beam. Okay. Let's call it number two. It's not liking what I'm saying. Alright, so we put in a sketch as our beam length. That one metre. Now we, and then we just take that straight into simulate. Right from simulate, we can then go into refine and put a beam um, <coughs> idealization. They're calling it. It's got a direction. We uh, we apply a section to the beam, so we can do a rectangular hollow. Now we were 50 by 100. And our B is a 44, and our D internal is a 94. And if you're not sure, you can preview it, and um, you can check whether your moment of inertias and areas are adding up to what you expect. Apply it to there, and there you go. You can see whether it's um, in the correct orientation. go back now we can do our constraints now it'll only be a point constraint because the only the only model we have is a line so you can apply a point constraint with no rotation 
and we can apply a force at the end, which again is going to be over just this point. Then the Y. 2000 Newton vertical down and then we want a material steel run the analysis let's make a new one and we could put it beam in capitals and we might just Increase this plotting grid. Run it. Run it, and it's completed in one second. All right, so we can go into max principal stress. Forget about torsion. And it's nice to put in the deformation see that it's it's behaving correctly it's moving in the right axis and here we've got 89 MPA which is what the value that we found up here so as long as you understand the limitation that it's not showing the concentrations due to the applied force um, then you get the same result we can also look at um, displacement at the end here of 3 mil and, uh, if we uh, if it allows us to go back let's go back to the other one let's double check result of the displacement and there you go 3.85 yeah so same same results for stress and displacement but it only took one second to solve okay so that's the advantage of using the um, the beam idealization if you have lots of beams in a truss structure you can imagine how this is so, uh, saving you lots of time okay thank you